Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Brownsville Matters. I'm your host, Dr. W.F. Strong. We have with us this morning Michelle Davis, who is a birding enthusiast. Yes. She has lived in this region all of her life and has loved birds since she was a little one. Loved bird watching, has a high regard for them and love for them. So she's going to teach us today about what she knows. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you for having me. Do you have a favorite bird? Uh, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. The painted bunting. It only comes through here in a certain time of the year, mm-hmm. but it is a rainbow on a bird. A, a rainbow? Wow. A that's rainbow a, on a bird, yes. And can you see the rainbow when they fly? Um, so no. To speak, no, you have to. Roost? Yeah, only when they roost, yes. When they're, they sit for a minute and they're foraging, mm-hmm. and it's just unbelievable when you see one, you'll, you'll think, oh my goodness, all of these colors on a tiny bird, it's just amazing. This area here uh, is unique in the Northern Hemisphere for, um, it's kind of a crossroads for It's a flyway, birds, right? yes yeah. it is, yes. What, what, what all passes through here besides the bunting unbelievable Mm -hmm. uh warblers all types of warblers all types of shorebirds all types of hummingbirds Um, we are so fortunate to live in brownsville because we're on a jumping off point Mm -hmm. for uh, birding this rio grande valley is an incredible jewel we have so many places to see birds that it's um it's truly amazing um, well, the, we have this, this kind of corridor that's been created right along the Rio Grande. Correct. So, Correct. It, goes, it goes basically from kind of Boca Chica to Rio Grande City, something yes, like that. Yes, absolutely. There are so many uh, different wildlife uh, preserves. We have the Santa Ana Wildlife I love, Refuge. I love Santa Ana. There's uh, the Benson State Park up also a great closer. Um, Resaca de la Palma mm-hmm. is wonderful as well. And that's probably the newest of the Texas parks in this area. I think it was uh, established here in maybe 2008. Mm-hmm. And I used to go out there before it was established. And uh, some of the local ecology clubs would have overnight uh stays there. They go camp. Yes. And I had the most incredible experience uh, one night going out there because we were going to do a birding in the next uh, the next morning. It was Dr. Frank Benton Mm -hmm. from Porter High School. He led the um, ecology club out there. So we had about 20 kids and some of the teachers that went out there and one night driving through a field A jaguarundi ran in front of my car, and I was going uh, maybe 10 miles an hour, and he was running in front of the car uh, for a good good minute. Not very big, very Mm -hmm. low to the ground, almost Mm -hmm. sand-colored, blunt head, Mm -hmm. and I knew it was jaguarundi. And it was just an incredible experience. (laughs) And back then, I wish that yeah, I wish that I had had a cell phone at yeah, that moment to, to it. capture it but of course back in 1999 yeah. uh, the technology wasn't there for that well even with me in this modern age um, by the time i find the phone app on my phone it's mm-hmm. gone <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very slow at getting that great picture I, I do have a camera so when i travel i'll often keep it you know, ready to go in the console next to me. So it's a, because I'm terrible with the phone. It takes me 30 seconds to get the phone out. That's my rule, too. <laughs> and every time I see a good one, and then I realize my good camera is not here. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. So do, are you... Um, are you one who keeps the log of the or the birds you've seen? Like You know, I have not. Um, that was advice from my brother back in the early uh, days of birding. That was advice from my brother that I didn't keep a log because I was so busy with life. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I had a career. And that's why I say I'm a birding enthusiast mm-hmm. because I drop in and out of birding. It, that's the wonderful thing about it is that you can drop in and out. You still stay connected now with modern technology. Now you've got Facebook groups and you've got things like that where you can have um have an idea of what's passing through and but, but you can you can sit in your living room and be a birder oh yeah just look out the window yes yeah and chances are chances uh are you're gonna something. see something <laughs> uh but you have to go to where they're foraging where the where the insects are where the <laughs> seeds are 
to see what uh, you know or some you can really create, good ones. You can create that habitat absolutely. That will attract them. Will yes, attract them, right? absolutely. Yeah. I've got hummingbird feeders um, that the hummingbirds know to come to every year, and I captured incredible uh, pictures this year on my patio with hummingbirds. I have a lot of humming. I mean, we have a lot of hummingbirds at our house, and we you know put the feeders out. We're right on a rosaco, so that's helpful for. Um, Attracting the wild ducks, of course. Yes. And, and one year, one year we had the uh, white pelicans mm-hmm. that came, and they stayed about two weeks. And there were about a hundred of them. And they haven't been back. I've, I've been sad because it was magnificent to watch them. They're in Rancho Viejo. Are they? Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, I'll have to go yeah. over there and feed them and get them to come yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're on the they're on the golf course uh, oh, on eighteen. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. One of the things that amazed me is the way they would herd the fish. You know, yes, they, in they a circle. Get, they get yeah. a bunch of them at one end. Mm-hmm. They they herd the fish. Mm-hmm. Very clever creatures. Yeah, when you've been uh, a bird watcher, mm-hmm. you start realizing the behaviors and uh, the different uh, types of fishing that they do, mm-hmm. foraging. How quickly they can figure out little puzzles mm-hmm. and whether they use. I think crows are the only ones who you know use a stick to dip it in something to get an ant out or whatever they do. Yes. Uh, they use a tool, and that's uh, one of the signs of advanced intelligence, I guess. Speaking of the crow, um, people flock from all over mm-hmm. the world to come to the dump in chances of seeing the Tamalipan crow. Oh. Yes. Yes, <laughs> they do. So, yes. Yeah, the dump is swarming with birds, mostly seagulls as far as I see. Right, but, but there's a specific crow really? that people are looking for uh, to put on their list. I, is it... Um, Gray, brown, it's it's or in the it, in it's uh, very similar to the crow, but it's larger. Mm-hmm. It's larger, uh, and the beak is a little bit different. But yeah, people come from all over the world to mark that one off of their list. A couple of years ago, in October, I was invited by the Peregrine Falcon Foundation to go out to the island and help them tag the falcons on their migration. And you know, they it's kind of a survey that they do to, to, to where they. They check the blood and they check the health of the birds. Nice. And uh, so I got to hold one, you know, while they tagged it, and it was a magnificent experience because uh, they're very strong. You know, I had the the wings, uh, you know, bound down obviously mm-hmm. by my hands, and uh, it had leather uh, gloves because they can really hurt you. <laughs> it got some very sharp talons. And uh, but even when I was holding it, it was it was pushing its wings outward, right. and I said, "My goodness, it got quite some force there." And then whenever I released it, you know, just tossed it, uh, you know, into the air so it could take off. But they, uh, this group I was working with, didn't have this particular experience. But they told me about a particular bird by another group that had been tracked from mm-hmm. somewhere you know, North Greenland, and it would fly all the way down to Argentina, and they tracked it for four years. And it was, the thing that blew my mind is every year it would roost in the same church steeple Amazing. in Argentina. And it would fly basically the same route, unless the weather was somehow different. Sometimes it would right. fly uh, through here and go on up, kind of following the curve stop. of the coast. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it would just fly across the Gulf. Just, Interesting, you know, and, and they say sometimes they'll take a rest on um, oil derricks or ships or whatever. Right. Uh, but just shrimp am- boat, just amazing guidance systems that these creatures have. And so yeah, the, we're so learning. Those we're learning here. a lot more now that uh, technology banding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're banding hummingbirds, yeah, they're banding all to, types of birds. Well, what's the range of the hummingbird? Do you know? Well, the range of the hummingbird is all the way from Canada to Central America. They're so little. Oh, <laughs> it's, they're unbelievable too. They, yes, I've been to Costa Rica to uh, look at the hummingbirds and photograph the hummingbirds. Is the is Costa Rica kind of the number one birder paradise in the world? It is a paradise. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it's up there at the very top. It is. Where else would you get in the world, you know, the great uh, great spots for birders? In the world, probably mm-hmm. Panama as well. Mm-hmm. Panama, the Central American countries. Uh, there are some wonderful spots in Mexico. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, we used to go down to El Cielo, um, before the situation in Mexico got out of control. 
and uh, we would spend a good amount of time there in the cloud forest looking for the mountain trogan. Did you stay in those cabins up there? I didn't. I would stay in the high meadow. It's called Alta Cima. Mm-hmm. And it is on the side of the mountain mm-hmm. closest to the cabins up there. Okay. Yeah. I tell you, the first time I went there, I stayed in those cabins. and It's a magical experience. It is. It is. One morning at about 10 a.m., the fog cleared, the clouds moved off, and mm-hmm. it lit up a wildflower prairie kind of there in the forest and I thought they have it, agapanthus I thought I was the in, lily of the Nile there it was so gorgeous I thought I was in a dream mm-hmm. I mean really it, it was mm-hmm. it was just so perfect and, and the bromeliads in the trees mm-hmm. and and then the birds and, and the birds it is yes paradise. it is you, paradise you want paradise on earth there yes there it is. and it's just six hours south of mm-hmm. here by car well, the TSC owns Rancho de Cielo, mm-hmm. and for a while, of course, because of the trouble, they had to had to shut it down. But I, I don't know what the situation is now. I talked to Larry Loff, and he said that uh, the people down there who took care of the trucks and the the cabins and all that they had maintained, and he said everything's still they're good still maintaining everything. Everything's fine. Uh, just you know the travel getting there. Yes. And, feeling safe yes. getting there. Yes, But yes, I think of it often as uh, I've traveled a lot in this world, and that's truly kind of it's the unbelievable. two or three most beautiful places that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So um, these peregrine falcons that pass through here, they, they use this, actually Padre Island, the mud flats, mm-hmm. That's kind of their bed and breakfast. You know, they they stop maybe for a couple of weeks to refuel. Right, the abundance of food mm-hmm. is yeah. is awesome there. I mean, uh, March, April, mm-hmm. May at yeah. the island uh, is really the place to be yeah. because once a cold front comes in, it's a fallout. If if the cold front is strong enough, the birds cannot fly, so they will sit. Mm-hmm. And when they sit, and it's just after a rain. It's unbelievable. They're so tired. Sometimes they're they're not even uh, aware that you're there. They don't care that you're there. They're just jumping around, uh, looking for food, looking for a little bit of shelter, going to rest, and then stay there for a period of time and then take off. Well, these guys that were tracking the uh, falcons and doing a survey of them told me that they like the mud flats because they can land a long way from anything or anybody, and mm-hmm. uh, they don't have any predators that can come out of the brush and get them. Right. So they have line of sight for literally a mile or more. Yeah, what you're describing is right next to the convention center on South Padre mm-hmm. Island, there's yeah. a, um, a walkway yeah. that leads out to those flats, and you can see exactly what you're mm-hmm. saying. There are people out there that have scopes. They've, of course, they've got their binoculars, but you know, if you want to see a little further out, you've got to have a scope. And uh, they're out there observing the peregrines, the different <laughs> types of birds, because they can. They're looking around, making sure that everything's safe. Well, where we went with the foundation, uh, they were doing most of their work using, um, you know, let's say, all-terrain vehicles. They were mm-hmm, using the, mm-hmm. the, the four wheelers, and uh, they were on the preserve property. I think it's, uh, what is it that's right across the bay there, that big preserve? Laguna de Escosa. Yeah, Laguna de Escosa. Laguna de Escosa has a lot of land Mm -hmm. on the island itself. And so the Peregrine Falcon Foundation does its survey on that property. They use these four wheelers. and uh, When I was out there with them, we'd we'd go (laughs) over about five miles, I would say. And uh, they they to be out there all day, right? Trying to, they have to, they have to get the, they have to trap them, and then, and then do their their survey. But they take a blood sample, and but anyway, I, I well, developed what, an enormous respect for those birds, yes. given the amount of uh, eight thousand miles that they travel, you know, to go roost. <laughs> it's amazing. One of the uh, gems that we have here in the valley also tied to Laguna de Escosa is the Aplomado falcon. That, from the time I was a kid, it was always in the news that um, with the DDT spraying, it oh, had diminished yeah. the population. And once you've seen one of those, you're, you want to go back to see it again. 
They're unbelievable. How big? And they're not very big. big. They're not the very first time that I saw one was out at the Cameron County Airport and it was on a fence. Yes. And it's that borders Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refuge. And that is a fantastic place if you're an you know, first time birder to go out there and they have blinds and you will see all kinds of uh, green jays. Um, you'll see all kinds of doves, cardinals, uh, kiskadees, all kinds of birds. Chachalacas. Are, oh, chachalacas all over the place. <laughs> Such a fun name to say. Yeah, chachalaca. chachalaca. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple of friends that are chachalacas. It's interesting to me that uh, your name is Davis because the first birder I ever knew was my doctor. His name was Dr. Davis. And when I was growing up, and uh, my mother would say, on his days off, uh, he goes down to the valley and looks for birds. And I thought, how strange. <laughs> that, that's a strange thing to do. <laughs> so what a strange thing. It's and, an awesome thing to do for the soul. Um, that's oh, what yeah. I say, for well, your soul to as do I've that. Gotten, as I've gotten older, of course, mm-hmm. there, I've, I've, for one thing, I've seen so many people doing it, you know, who mm-hmm. are birders and serious birders. Well, I'm so the excited that there, there are kids doing it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah you go out there um, and you see families and you see little kids that are into it. They've got their apps mm-hmm. way back when, you know, it used to be the National Geographic book that you hauled around. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's apps. Yeah. Kids are on eBird, Merlin, mm-hmm. uh, looking and identifying. So it's a lesson. That's They're awesome. out there learning mm-hmm. because there are a lot of things to identifying birds. You know, it's the beaks, it's the wings, um, the stature, a lot of different things. But it's exciting that kids are out there and it's become a family thing. And young adults, I love it. Now I see a lot of young adults in groups with their bird books and their cameras and they're into it. And it's a way to socialize. Yeah. You meet people from all over the world here. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, yes. At the Sable Palm Grove as well. Unbelievable place. Well, the Sable Palm was owned by, or I don't know, still is Audubon. Audubon. They still own it? Or? I, I believe they're affiliated still. Mm-hmm. But that is an unbelievable place. Yes, it is. I, I love, I've always loved that. I don't think I've been to uh, the Resaca de la Palma, that new facility. I haven't yes. been there. Yes. It is worth it. They, they build trails in it? Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a, um, a paved trail. Mm-hmm. You can ride a bike on it. Uh, you can take the tram at certain times. But off of the paved area, there are smaller trails that lead to risacas that lead deep in. My favorite is Hunter's Lane down in there. Um, you can take a, a short jaunt, and then there's Rosaka down there. And my kids bought me a blind a couple of years ago, <laughs> a portable blind that I would take on my back and then set it up, sit there, and I had the most magnificent experience <laughs> photographing a kiskadee, uh, a kiskadee pair in their mating. And when I moved outside of the blind, there was a bobcat sitting there. He had no idea I was there. And so I got a two for one. I got the Kiskadees and I got this beautiful bobcat that was just lounging around, taking it easy. I guess your blind worked. I guess, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you say you carry it in. How big is it? Yeah, it's, you, just, you, it's just round. It's round and it, 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 pops up. it pops up and it pops up tall and has the windows and uh, yeah, have my little chair. How much does it weigh? It, a couple of pounds, probably about five or six pounds. Really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So and you, so you sit in it. Is, I have the image of like mm-hmm. a big hat that's yes. over you. Yes, and it's camouflage. Mm, that's yeah. awesome. So you take that in, and you sit, and you just sit quietly. Sit and quietly. After a while, you're part of the environment, and they exactly. don't know you're there. No, no, and it's very quiet out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to, Hunter's Lane, you have to uh, walk a little bit or ride your bike down in there. But there's a Rasaka filled with water. Uh, I've observed the kingfisher out there. There's a green and a belted out there, and they're beautiful. And they're wary of people, but having a blind helps. Well, you were telling me that you grew up on the river. Mm-hmm. And when, when you were young, uh, what birds do you remember seeing out there? I remember seeing the kingfisher. The kingfisher. That was one. Green jays back then. 
You know, to see a green jay, people come from all over the country to see the green jay because it's in the, of the jays, it's in its northernmost uh, habitat here. Oh, I yes. didn't know that. Yeah, no. the green jays aren't too much uh, farther north. And uh, people come here because, of course, they are used to seeing a blue jay or a brown jay or a stellar jay. But to see a green jay is unbelievable. And a lot of people that live here have never even seen a green jay, but they're in abundance. You can go down to the college, Mm -hmm. um, and there's a trail right off of the main boardwalk that leads over the um, The, Rasaka. The land bridge. Mm -hmm. There's a trail on the other side of the the library that leads toward where the old coffee shop used to be. That's an incredible place to bird as well. When I'm at the university, I often see people with, you know, their uh, their huge cameras, you know, with their telephoto lenses and <laughs> the serious birders out there traipsing the campus because it's a yes. known it's it's a known spot for it is a known spot for seeing birds of all kinds. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that there was particular ones that they say, well, we need to go to the university to see that bird. Yeah, and at any time now on the RGV uh, birding groups. Mm-hmm. Um, People are sharing information. Back then, um, when you didn't have social media, it was word of mouth and if you happen to run into somebody. But now, people are posting photographs. So there's much more interest in finding the particular bird. So they tell you that this particular bird is yes. here and then people mm-hmm. <laughs> rush over and scare it off. <laughs> well, the thing about birders is that they want to share they want to share, and they want other people to see it as well. Mm-hmm. I was recently in Corpus uh, for the for the big football game, and I went downtown to eat, and I noticed people looking up, and I said, oh, they're looking for the cattle tyrant, which is way off course. It's a bird that you normally see in Venezuela, but people are flocking to Corpus Christi, downtown Corpus Christi, to find the cattle tyrant. What a great name. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, cattle tyrant. The cattle tyrant. <laughs> Why is it? Yeah, is it I don't know. Does it terrorize cattle? I, it probably does. <laughs> it probably does. But yeah, people are looking up. And so, you know, birding really does bring tourism. Oh, absolutely. You know, it yeah. really does. And yeah. Brownsville's a hot spot for it. The How did we get all these parks, what they call the birding center and the butterfly Mm -hmm. corridor and all that. Who put all that together? Gosh, you know, I can lead you to the birding expert (laughs) who was part of that. Uh Absolutely. And he can tell you the entire history of that because he worked there for, for a while and, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that they did. A oh, brilliant idea. Yes, And I brilliant. know that that has caused uh, some landowners to mm-hmm. pass their land over to the preserves mm-hmm. if they are near them so they continue yes. with this. this we need to preserve the land. kind yes. of uh, brush land along the river. Yes, that's, that's why it's really, really important. We have so many jewels mm-hmm. along the brush land, all the way from Boca Chica Beach, which, you know, now it's a, it's a different mm-hmm. story. Um, to Sable Palm, Rosaca de la Palma, and then you've got Santa Ana Wildlife Refuge. And there are a couple, Estero Llano in uh, Westlaco is unbelievable too. Mm-hmm. So if, if, you do, if you count on your fingers, how many of those preserves are there from, uh, if you go from the Gulf from the over Gulf to, over up to, to McAllen, let's uh, say. Well, McAllen past, Mission. Yeah, over to Benson. Just specifically up towards, there's a Nakwa. Um, one, two, three. There's at least six. And are all of them accessible? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because I know there's some land that has been set aside, but mm-hmm. I don't think there's trails or. Exactly. Maybe you can go in there if you exactly. want to. Exactly. That brush is pretty thick. <laughs> you know, you can't. Yes. I always think uh, whenever I'm out in the brush at all, I think of the early explorers and say, how did they get through How did they get through the thicket? Yes. Machetes. The the hardship. Yeah, very hard. The hardship of it. And they didn't have all the cool stuff we have, you know, the the fantastic gloves and shoes. True. Well, we have a jewel here. Yeah, we do. We have Oliveda Park Mm -hmm. for the parrots. People come from all over the place. To me, I've met so many people from different parts of the world at Oliveda Park. 
uh, looking up at the parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, I think that's the the one thing that most people here know is that we have wild parrots. We do, but that's all that I think most people who are not into the bird world that's mm-hmm. kind of what they know end of <laughs> mm-hmm. end of yeah but you just take a look the scarlet tanager sometimes stops here and mm-hmm. it is a showstopper as well if you see a, a big bird that's red other than a cardinal um, you know it's just beautiful uh, people who live on the risacas probably are more aware of the of the birds that are yeah. in the area i've seen some magnificent birds i don't know what they are yes often, but I've, I've yeah. seen. we have roseate spoonbills that are in our risacas mm-hmm. and they look like flamingos mm-hmm. but the the bill is flat and they are spoonbills and they are magnificent the more crustacean that they eat the the more pink they get there's some creature that's in my risaca that sounds like a hog it's a bird mm-hmm. And mm. it makes this sound, to me, it sounds like mm-hmm. a hog, a real deep wow. guttural sound, but I know it's a bird, uh-huh. but I can't figure out what yeah. bird is making that noise. It's very unusual. You need to pull your binoculars <laughs> out and take <laughs> well, a look. I only hear it at night. Oh, okay. But, but I know, you know, it's I know not it's an a owl? bird. No, I know it's a bird because it's often in a tree mm-hmm. and there'll be two or three of them. They make a lot of racket. And anyway, I, I'm, I guess I've never bothered to go to e, go to eBird. <laughs> yes, eBird. eBird and Merlin and you know there are apps out there that oh, are these apps like a, eBird yeah. is an app mm-hmm. and, and Merlin Mer- Merlin, Merlin. Mm-hmm. An and app. then there's fantastic books as well. Oh yes. To you know the National Geographic uh, Birds of North America is one, you know, Peterson's another guide, Sibley another guide. There are guide birding guides and then there are birding guides specific to Texas. I mean, you can go deep I'm sure. Yes. Do you do you use a book or use the app? I use the book. I still use the book. Mm-hmm. I do. I do because uh, You're to old me, school. yeah, I'm old school. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you my book. <laughs> I brought okay. I brought my book. You'll you'll yeah. Okay. And you know when you're out there, you get sweaty and and my book is old and tattered, but it's a go to because mm-hmm. I already know. Okay, I'm looking for a warbler. What type of warbler? Here, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look. And the beauty about birding is you get a group and it's group think, mm-hmm. and you all are identifying together. And it's really wonderful to identify something that is not normally here, and uh, it's it's kind of it's a, it's a treasure hunt. And That's you, what it is. Do you do that by whispering? Yes, yes. people are. <laughs> yeah, you gotta talk really quiet. <laughs> yeah, you, yes, because you don't want to scare the I, bird I would off. Imagine, yes. Yeah. So, what's uh, is this year going to be a good year? Well, it's very very hard to predict. Mm-hmm. It, it's it dependent was, upon the weather. I mean, we had such an incredibly hot summer mm-hmm. with hardly any rain um, that, you know, the seeds and the insects, you know, just depends. It just depends. If we have a good northern mm-hmm. that comes around, uh, the birds will stop because they're making the flyover. They're heading, they're heading back to Canada and North America from Central America. And that's when we really, really, really get to see the jewels that are, you know, not normally here, they make the stop. My daughter was asking me the other evening when we were stopped at a red light and she saw all the grackles on the, on the wires. Yes. And she said, why do they do that? Why do you have all those birds there? She said, she said they're not there in the summertime. Mm-hmm. So why are they there? And what are they doing? And I said, I don't know. They like to gather together. In I the know. Evening. Yeah, I they're up to something. I don't know what the purpose is, but they, they, do the they same, like to do that. They do the same thing on the campus of UT Austin. Mm-hmm. They've done it for years. And I'm, I've noticed that, yeah, it's the Sam's parking lot. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. doing that area right at Alton Glore yeah. at the highway. Yeah, there's just an overabundance of birds. I don't I don't have the answer to that question. <laughs> I wonder why, too. Well, I, I did hear a, a special on NPR where they, there was a guy who – cities hired mm-hmm. to uh, come out and scare them off and yes. he would do it with other birds you know birds yeah. that would uh, sometimes they them. yeah they hang a, a an owl mm-hmm. uh, what looks like an owl, owl close yeah. by but yeah that doesn't deter them very much i don't know why they wanted to scare them off i think it's kind of cool that they gather like that but maybe i think maybe they damage things somehow or the waste yeah probably the waste like 
you know, the pigeons in the inner city mm -hmm. around churches and stuff. And they sometimes tell people don't feed the pigeons, but people can't resist. <laughs> right. One of the places that we didn't talk about that's also awesome for birding is the National Battlefield at uh, 511. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, you can see birds of prey out there and Nilgai. But they don't have much brush, do they? It's, they do. But it's You'd be surprised. It, it's, but it's open. It's open. So you okay. get the birds of prey oh, out there. Yeah. You get do the we, bigger birds of prey. Do we have any eagles here? You know, I have never seen an American eagle here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they they can't be here, but we, we see the crested caracara, the Mexican eagle, mm -hmm. here a lot. I like the vultures. Yes. The turkey vultures. Yes. I think they're, yeah. I, I love watching them fly and mm -hmm. surf the thermals. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then to see them actually in action, uh, picking away at a carcass oh. is something else too. Yes. Uh, nature's cleaners. Right. And they don't have any feathers on their head for that reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're amazing creatures. Mm -hmm. I think underappreciated because underappreciated. people think they're ugly and they say, oh, yeah. they're, they're kind of gross. But uh, they, they perform a very important function, really. Yes. They, I've heard someone call them the, the hazmat team. <laughs> the hazmat team of the birds, yeah. Because <laughs> they they, they're immune to anthrax and you mm. know, stuff that would be very dangerous to humans. Mm. So, so very interesting. And uh, The other thing I found interesting was that uh, they go to – they spot carrion not by eyesight but by smell. By smell. They're if they're the wind carries it to them, they be a long way off and they smell it. Mm. And they go. And so well thank you so mm. much for coming in. Yes. It's a great uh, it's a great inspiration here because we can uh, now get ready for spring. And, yes, and get, absolutely. Get e bird and, and yeah, get, our get on Texas the book. yeah, get on the Facebook group uh, RGV birding mm -hmm. and you'll get a lot of tips. Uh, from you know different people you'll see photos of you know what they're what they're seeing out there it's really wonderful it's like a treasure hunt and how do you um, how many people are on the the facebook page the rgv uh, i would imagine that it's approaching a couple thousand probably mm -hmm. by now by now yeah because brownsville is the jumping off point for a lot of different places you know we're we're within proximity to see some wonderful wonderful birds do they have uh, events where they say, okay, we're going to meet out at this time to look for this bird or is there well, anything like that? I, I think that groups form, naturally. you know, yeah, naturally. But, you know, Harlingen has had a birding event. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been able to attend it. I've been working, so I haven't been able to attend it just yet. But I look forward to it. And I know that they run groups off of, you know, different things to private ranches, which is awesome. Because that's have. land you can't get onto. Oh, that's a wonderful yeah. thing for ranchers to open up like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just remem remembering that they used to have a store over there in Harlingen. I don't know if it still exists on bird, birding, you know, with uh, bird feed and all sorts of uh, probably, yeah. probably you know, books and blinds, Yeah, books, books and hummingbird feeders and bird birders. feeders, yes. I don't know if it still exists, but it used to be over there by the HEV store. The other thing I was thinking about is the National Bird uh, Butterfly Center also has wonderful birds out there, in addition to their wonderful butterflies. Well, I'm sure you run into butterflies all over everywhere. the place. Yes. Yeah. So, do you have those in your book too? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I photograph uh, butterflies as well. Not as much as birds, but uh, yeah. yeah. And it's wonderful to photograph them because then you always have that memory of where you were when you photographed that bird. And who you were with and the camaraderie that you have with people. And it's the monarchs that pass through here? Uh, monarchs pass through here, yeah. All, yeah. all types I'm mean, sure of, there are all kinds. Yes. That's the, that's the, the granddaddy, mm -hmm. so to speak. That's the one mm -hmm. everybody knows is the and, monarch. And at Resaca de la Palma, mm -hmm. they have planted native plants out there. And it really does mm -hmm. attract the butterflies. You can see the Mexican blue wing out there. And yeah, that's a gem too. So you're saying in the, in late February, March, that's when you really need to get out and start. Well, working. for the for the butterflies, you know, the abundance is usually in October, November, and right about now, it's all year, depending yeah. on on the butterfly species. Anytime, yeah, almost right. Yeah, and but for for birding, mm -hmm. anytime, anytime, anytime. Yes. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching this BSPA video. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you like what you see. And if you really like what you see, go ahead and go to our website, brosoperformingarts.org, and smash the donate button. And then we'll really like you too. Thank <laughs> you.